the river is liquid ethane. The temperature is minus 180 degrees Celsius. The lake is liquid hydrocarbons and there are black deposits of tar. The atmosphere is worse than the smoggiest city on Earth. Nitrogen laced with the likes of propane and acetylene. The mist is methane. This is Titan, the greatest moon of Saturn. Such an exotic moon sits well in this dazzling domain. Saturn, Lord of the Rings, God of the Harvest, is sixth planet from the Sun, taking almost 30 years to complete an orbit. Second largest planet, Saturn's diameter is 120,000 kilometers, the width of nine Earths. Saturn could accommodate Earth 752 times, far fewer than Jupiter. Saturn has a tilt. Earth leans at 23.4 degrees, Saturn at 27. But what style? Were there a glass of water big enough, Saturn would float, for the planet is a ball of gas, just seven-tenths the density of water. Like Jupiter, Saturn has no solid surface, just weather bands. White is high cloud, yellow, lower cloud. In false color, the bands are hazy, less defined than on Jupiter. It's because Saturn's cloud lies lower in the atmosphere. Two anticyclones, whirls of high pressure. And a jet stream, Saturn has the strongest winds. And it spins so fast, once in less than 11 hours, that Saturn, like Jupiter, bulges at the equator and is squashed at the poles. Saturn is 94% hydrogen, the rest mainly helium. There are five cloud layers. Topmost, the diffuse and hazy stratosphere. Then, ammonia ice crystals. Ammonium hydrosulfide, ice crystals of water, and finally droplets of water. The deeper in, the hotter and denser it gets. At over a thousand kilometers in, hydrogen goes liquid. Beyond 25,000 kilometers, it's metallic. The rocky core is 15,000 degrees. Saturn's magnetic field is probably due to electrical currents in the liquid metallic hydrogen. A result is aurorae around the poles as the magnetic field traps electrically charged particles from the solar wind. The particles are drawn downwards by force lines to react with the atmosphere, particles that have traveled 10 times farther than Earth is from the sun. The rings of Saturn. Less than a kilometer thick and half a million wide, they're reason enough for manned spaceflight. The brightest rings, those we can see through a telescope, would stretch from Earth almost to the moon. The darker rings, which we can't see, stretch much, much farther. From Earth, our view of the rings and the sunlight they reflect change as Saturn orbits the Sun on a tilted axis. Here, they appear almost edge on. Then gradually, through the season, they open. The gap in the rings is called the Cassini division. This smaller gap, the Anchor division, is in Saturn's so-called A-ring. There are seven rings, each with a letter. This is the C-ring, less sparkling than A and B. Like all the rings, it's comprised of hundreds of ringlets. Time-lapse of the B-ring, the broadest and brightest. The dark spokes are possibly dust, levitated by electrostatic forces. So close are the rings to Saturn that its gravitational tug prevents them forming a moon. Instead, they're swarms of moonlets, from grains of dust to rocks the size of tanks. 
The rings may be the debris of a moon that came too close, or of moons that collided. Either way, eventually, they'll fall into the planet. Three rings, D, E and G, are dark and virtually invisible. The thinnest, ring F, is just beyond ring A, and kept on the straight and narrow by a couple of shepherd moons. Saturn has more than 30 moons, and the list keeps growing. As with all gas giants, moons are the only solid and tangible bodies. Mimas may be tiny, but we could land there. An impactor once did, and dug a great crater. Had it been bigger, Mimas would be dust. Enceladus is twice as big, but still just 500 kilometers wide. Dusted possibly by icy particles from Saturn's E-ring, the surface is highly reflective. Equally icy and twice the size again, Tethys, a fault line almost girdles the moon. A little larger and with a big crater, Dione is icy, riven and battered. Even its fault lines are eroded by impacts. A close-up of Rhea, diameter 1,500 kilometers, an ancient surface recording four and a half billion years of impacts. This is Hyperion, a fuzzy image, but undeniably the spitting image of a bath sponge. Next out, dark markings on icy Iapetus, 1,400 kilometers wide and odd little Phoebe, which orbits in reverse. In a class of its own is Titan, Saturn's single big moon. Larger than Mercury, Titan's dense atmosphere shrouds the surface. But the haze has been penetrated in near infrared. The Hubble Space Telescope has revealed two distinct surfaces, they may well correspond to land and oceans. This could be the picture. Seas of liquid hydrocarbons, rocks coated in hydrocarbon sludge, an atmosphere like Earth rich in nitrogen but 10 times denser, a choking smog as sunlight breaks down methane. Methane breakdown is known to produce organic molecules. The question is, do they form long-chain proteins with a potential for life? Is Titan early Earth in deep freeze? To find out, this mission launched in 1997. Cassini, as it's called, was the heaviest craft ever to blast into space. Three years later, it reached Jupiter having swung twice by Venus and once by Earth for gravity assist. With another push from Jupiter and another four years, Cassini aims a lander at Titan. It's part of a four-year program because Cassini's overall objective is to survey the whole Saturnian system. The probe named Huygens hits Titan's deep atmosphere. Then, breaking by parachute, Huygens samples the smog. For relay to Earth, data is radioed to the mother craft, Cassini. Huygens must land gently. The icy surface is like steel. With no sun for solar cells, Huygens has just 30 minutes of power. As it snows ethane and methane, data is transmitted live. And if it's a splashdown, Huygens can float. The landing, all being well, is in 2005. Whether or not Titan yields up the building blocks of life, it'll be a long time before human life comes face to face with the Lord of the Rings.